Good morning, I'm Taylor Combalizier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Our next presenter is James McIntosh, who's the president and CEO of Greatcliff Exploration. Greatcliff is a junior explorer focused on its Shakespeare Gold project located west of Sudbury. Uh, James, you have, you'll have 15 minutes for the presentation and then we'll have five minutes for Q&A at the end of the session. Please take it away. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Um, we're pretty excited at Great Cliff. We, uh, I was part of the group that created the company in August of uh, 2019. We took it public in August of 2020. And uh, the vision was to explore for gold in the shadow of a historic head frame. Uh, we're on the CSE under GRAY. We're on OTCQB under GRYCF. And we're also trading on Frankfurt under GE0. So we've got a broad distribution, and it's a very uh, it's a very interesting gold story. Really, if you want to break it down, there's there's two projects about a 1,025 hectare Shakespeare Gold project, which is a brownfields project. Uh, we're looking for more high grade gold, um, and we've completed three phases of drilling. 45 holes of which 24 have been released as we got those assays back from the assay lab. There'll be lots more to come. We had a very thin uh, two hole mineralized zone that we were looking for, which was a, found under historic drilling in 2014. We now have a mineralized zone that is open in all directions. It's over 115 meters going Northeast, Southwest and over 120 meters northwest southeast down to a depth of greater than 250 meters. The property adjacent to that, the Baldwin project, we picked up after we went public in August of 2020. It's 1500 hectares that are adjacent and have very similar geology to Shakespeare. We believe we'll find gold, more gold at Shakespeare, we'll find gold at Baldwin, and thereby we'll have the makings of a new Ontario gold camp. Our all-star technical team has been credited with major discoveries in Ontario and else in, elsewhere in the world. And uh, they're part of what makes the whole Greycliff project more exciting. All of the people involved with Greycliff are shareholders and uh, that obviously puts us in a, in a better place than a lot of smaller companies. We have a tight capital structure and we're fully funded for 2022's exploration program. So the Shakespeare project is located about 88 kilometers west of Sudbury, eight kilometers off the Trans-Canada Highway. Um, we're in a very well-known geology, a lot of a significant greenstone. Uh, we're right at the uh, Archean and Southern Superior Geologic Province uh, contacts. And then we have full power, water, and road access directly to site. As I mentioned, we're one crown patented lease, two crown leases, and 40 mineral claims covering 1,025 hectares in one contiguous block. It's a brownfield site because the Shakespeare mine was in operation for about four years. Um, and they produced by hand over just under 3,000 ounces of gold from six areas. As I stated, we've got three phases done um, and we're about to initiate the fourth phase of drilling. The mineralized zone is significantly um, wide gold intersections with multiple high grade intersections. When you look at our property, you can see this, this basically six kilometer mineralized trend in yellow that goes up like this. It's crossed by the Murray Fault, which is a regional fault structure about 250 kilometers that goes all the way to Sudbury. And you've got uh, splays coming off of the fault. You have minor splays as well that come across. You can see how close we are to the Trans Canada. Here it is right here. And this is the eight kilometer road that comes in Agnew Lake and then Fire Hall Road that goes right through our property. We've been focusing our drilling in the center section here, and that is to get a, this is where the old Miller shaft, we call it the Miller shaft uh, in honor of the prospector who developed the, or found the property in the beginning. Um, but you can see the prospecting along this mineralized trend, which sort of snakes through the property. Um, there's copper, there's nickel, 
Uh, you've even got cobalt and some PGEs. And this area up here, we actually had some field sampling that were in excess of 3% copper. So the property is highly mineralized. There's a, uh, another fault that sort of comes along here. It's the, it's the cliff that forms the edge of the property. So this shaft is actually about 250 to, uh, feet above the, the Agnew Lake Road uh, elevation, which is uh, significant because the number three added actually comes out well above the road surface. Um, and it gives us some excellent access. The property is really a series of quartz veins and stockworks of quartz veins, some that have uh, significant sulfides, uh, copper, lead, zinc, um, nickel, and some where you have free gold in quartz veins and thus the large amount of VG that we have in some of the uh, drill core. These quartz veins are also found uh, down in this area and there's also quartz veins in this area here. Um, and we will be stepping out in the drilling during 2022. We believe there's a lot more gold on this trend. And we also believe there's further gold down in this part of the mineralized trend. So we'll be exploring that in, in our starting our initial exploration of that in 2022. As I mentioned earlier, there is some VG. This is actually from hole 21. Um, and, uh, and that's just, uh, it's, it, it's so easy to see, but it, I just figured I'd blow it up for everybody. So we mentioned, I mentioned the number three at it. We're looking at hopefully permitting that during 2022, uh, which would give us access to uh, some underground uh, drilling and also allow us to do some channel sampling along the old number three at it. We just completed airborne geophysics on the property and we are waiting on those results. That will, be, that will also help us with targeting new holes. So when we talk about the drilling that we've done, the, the 2014 historic drilling was just two holes right here, uh, drilled one above the other, and uh, they had a small amount of mineralization. We have then gone in and done 7,000 meters of which uh, the first section, the first important holes were done, phase one was this first seven holes. We had significant mineralization in five of the seven, the best ones being the 4.6 meters of five grams at a depth of 76, five meters of five grams at a depth of 114, and five meters of 8.6 grams at a depth of 68. So all in this sort of upper uh, section of the, of, the, uh, of the mineralized zone. You then got into some deeper, uh, deeper holes, hole eight and nine uh, were a little bit deeper, 16 meters of 16 grams, 16 meters of 13 grams. Um, when you get to 21 and 22, which are down at the bottom of the mineralized zone, uh, you've got four meters of 19 grams with 0.6 meters of 112 grams in the same hole and another four meters of 46 grams with 2.7 meters of 46 grams in the same hole. So this thing is open at depth. There's a lot of high grade. Um, when I talk about the width, you can see in this cross section, it's actually 115 meters wide and you've got well over 120 meters along this cross section. Um, and as I said, you're open at depth. We're down to 250 meters. So it's a, it's a, there's a lot of gold. We need to find out how much more. And as we input all of this information into our 3D model, um, you'll see we've got all the historic workings in there. We've got the field sampling in there. We also have some structural modeling, some whole rock analysis. All of that is going into this 3D model, which will give us a much better um, understanding of the genesis of the gold and where to best step out and, uh, and find it along trend. The airborne will also help with that. Uh, as soon as the ground uh, firms up, we'll be doing uh, ground geophysics. We'll be doing some IP, which will give us further targets. So we're looking forward to a lot of uh, new targets on the Shakespeare property. And by year end, 2022, uh, we should be able to uh, give everyone a maiden resource on uh, Ironically, in 20, in the turn of the century, when they originally 
mined this. It was all done by hand and there was never a resource estimate. There was never an analysis of how much potential gold was there. They just mined the veins. So we call it the Miller shaft, ironically, because Miller was the prospector. He found a sample um, at surface roughly about here that was 250 ounces per ton. It was essentially a massive nugget in a quartz vein. And they then sank the shaft by hand from there. So we're really excited about 2022. A lot more sampling coming, a lot more drill results. We've got 20 holes to release from the the last uh, phase three drilling, and those will be coming out over the next two to three months. So there's a lot of new data coming out, a lot of exciting uh, exploration and some new targets and new drilling. We should be able to look at roughly five to 6,000 meters initially, but we have the ability to drill more holes if we uh, so deem it makes sense. Because we're all shareholders, including our drillers and our, some of our geologists and our, our other people working on the project, uh, we wanna be careful. We wanna make sure we're expending the money that the shareholders have given us uh, in the most uh, advantageous and, and, uh, and direct method. The Baldwin project is adjacent. It's about 1500 hectares in uh, two contiguous blocks. It abuts the uh, Shakespeare property right here on the Murray Fault. You can see the Murray Fault also cuts through this pro property. You can see another one of these uh, offshoots here. There's also a splay that comes off in, in around here. And you've got further splays off the, off the Murray Fault and off the, off the other regional faults throughout this area. This whole area is highly deformed, highly folded and faulted. Um, and we're really excited. We picked up the Baldwin property because in the historical assessment reports, the guys that were looking for uranium in this area um, didn't find uranium and they didn't even look for gold. There, the drill core, we noted a lot of similarities in the geology that we're pulling out of the drill core here at the Shakespeare with some of the drill core that they, they, they left on the surface. Now it's now gone, which would have been nice to have had it, um, but the geology was extremely similar. So we think we're gonna be able to find more gold here at Baldwin. And uh, the airborne that was done recently in January covered this whole area. And so we not only were able to map out where uh, from the VTEM here at Shakespeare, but we'll also see it again here at Baldwin and that should provide us with some good targets for Baldwin. We'll also be doing field sampling here and, uh, and looking for, uh, for, for ground geophysics as well once we get the VTEM results back. So we think collectively uh, these two properties can be the formation of a new gold camp for the uh, just west of Sudbury. And as you can see, the Trans Canada comes right in beside, right below them. So we're, we've got an excellent um, infrastructure and, and uh, we're really excited about both these projects. I've been doing this for 35 years or over 35 years. I'm a geologist, uh, left the field and went in, became a mining analyst in uh, the mid eighties left uh, in the 90s to go back and do corporate development with a couple of small mining companies. We put uh, three mines into production in Central America and South America. Um, so I've been involved in pretty much every aspect from prospecting right through to uh, working with mining companies that were in production. We've, uh, we've got a great team. Um, we've Probably the standout for our team is Bruce Durham and, and Don McKinnon Jr. Uh, collectively, those two have uh, 50, 45, 50 years of experience in, in all aspects of uh, exploration from staking right through to development. Bruce, of course, is credited with uh, being one of the co-discoverers of both the David Bell and the Golden Giant Mine, two of the three Hemlo mines that since they were discovered and, and put into production, have developed, produced over 26 million ounces of gold. 
Uh, Bruce also was the discoverer of the Bell Creek uh, gold mine in Timmins and the Redstone nickel mine in Timmins. So we, and all of our people are shareholders and, uh, and believe in the company. So we have a very shareholder centric view of, uh, of Great Cliff. The 30 million shares out, uh, 4.3 million warrants that exercisable between 45 and, and a dollar. And uh, so the total fully diluted is 36.3 million shares. Management and strategic investors own about 30%. Those strategic investors are, there's a group in, in Germany of, of shareholders that are very active um, and supportive. And we also have shareholders in Australia, the US, and of course, across Canada. We do have some institutional ownership as well uh, through the financings we've done with Red Cloud. So we're, we're pretty good shape. We're very excited about the future. We've got a uh, Brownfields Gold Project, a Greenfields Gold Project that collectively can form a new gold camp. We have a great team that are invested in the company and, and believe the story, a tight capital structure, and we're fully funded for 2022. It's, um, we're, I think that's pretty much our story. Perfect. Thank you very much for the great presentation, Jamie. Um, I'll just remind viewers that you can submit your questions uh, using the Q&A button on the platform. Uh, with that, we do have some already. Um, so first up, uh, what are your plans for CapEx uh, broken down by quarter and for 2023? Uh, how much of that will be devoted to Baldwin uh, and how soon can we expect uh, more results from phase three drilling? So I'll start off by saying uh, that we're looking at, at uh, spending about a million and a half on exploration during 2022. I won't break it down by quarter because it's dependent upon the uh, conditions. Uh, we obviously can't do any drilling uh, during breakup or because the property turns to mud uh, in a number of places. And uh, so we'll have to wait for that. Um, this winter has been extremely strange. We've had periods where there's been slush that's turned to solid ice, which has uh, been a problem for trying to do ground IP. We were actually looking at doing it during the winter. Um, as far as Baldwin goes, uh, we definitely uh, following the prospecting and the results of the, geo, of the geophysical uh, airborne geophysics, uh, we'll start to look at targeting and moving a drill onto Baldwin. It's easy to move them uh, within the different areas um, as we're very close to each other. Um, we do have two drills on site currently. Um, and uh, so we do have the ability to move one fairly quickly. Um, as far as the assay results go, as I stated it during the presentation, uh, we'll have a good solid flow of assay results over the next uh, two to three months. Um, and then as we continue to drill and, and put those results in, we're hoping we'll have a solid flow of information over the next three to four months. Perfect. Okay. Um, and then um, another question, uh, just maybe wondering if you could summarize kind of the evolution of the geological model that you've got at, uh, um, at the Miller shaft specifically. I know there's not a lot of time left. There's about one minute. But... I'll be really quick about it. We think there's multiple phases of mineralization. One of the things we found with the 3D modeling and some of the structure work we did is that these S folds that showed up in the mineralized map, uh, we're also seeing inside the quartz veins. And within quartz veins, there's the same uh, micro folding of things. The gold is, is often down the nose of these folds. And so that's been really interesting for us. So we're look, continuing to look for those S folded quartz veins and quartz vein stockworks that we can further uh, drill. Okay, perfect. That was a great uh, quick summary there. Uh, so we are out of time with that. So thank you very much, Jamie. And thank you to everybody uh, for joining us. Please reach out and become a shareholder of Greycliff.